Welcome back, Physical Science. This is the FC 3.3, kind of leading into limiting reagents by looking at what runs out. So in the last section, we looked at stoichiometric amounts, ones that involved both reactants getting used up completely. But of course, in reality, that doesn't usually happen. We usually have one thing running out and one thing left over. So we'll look at identifying what gets used up, what's left over in looking at limiting and excess reagents and various chemical reactions and describe some reasons why you would want certain things to be limiting while others to be extras or excess leftovers. Okay, so this section doesn't involve any calculations. It's just simply looking at the concept of limiting and excess reagents. So earlier, so we'll go through this, we'll highlight some things. We'll talk about a couple of things and uh, hopefully you'll be ready then for 3.4 which actually involves the calculation and also you we likely did the s'more lab right before this and uh, you can apply what you learned there for this part so earlier you saw that when stoichiometric amounts of reactants are combined all the reactants are used up so stoichiometric amounts mean all reactants used up the process, this produces the maximum possible amount of product. However, in practice, this rarely occurs. Careful measuring stoichiometric amounts of each reactant is tedious and often impractical. Usually, one of the reactants is used up first. So let's highlight that. In most reactions, one thing is going to get used up. The thing is, though, you can control which one is going to get used up by having extra of the other substance it's reacting with. So the reactant that is completely used up is called the limiting reagent. So that's worth a star right there. Limiting reagent defined. When this reactant runs out, the reaction stops. Okay, so that's a key thing to note too. Obviously, if you run out of it, the reaction is over. Some of the other reactant is left over. So therefore, the excess reagent is the substance that is present in a larger amount than is required and it is going to be left over after the reaction is over. So we can kind of think of it, if you bought eight wieners and bought a dozen hot dog buns, you'd have four buns left over and all the hot dog wieners would be used up. You can kind of think of a real life scenario like that. There could only be one limiting reagent, but there could be more than one excess reagent. Okay. So that's kind of how that works. What's left over, what's used up, etc. So limiting in excess reagents. Letting a Bunsen burner flame or any kind of flame is a familiar activity involving limiting in excess reagents. When you light a burner, you adjust the barrel to limit the rate at which oxygen reaches the fuel. This is because an air-fuel mixture that is rich in fuel is necessary to ignite it. So remember we talked about that. And uh, however, once the burner is lit, and you're ready to use it, you make another adjustment, you open the barrel to allow more air into it. Most of the natural gas Bunsen burners use methane, and of course the burners that we have are butane, and the chemical, but if we thought of it as being like methane, this could be the reaction here. The clue blue flame, as we saw with the combustion unit, is evidence of complete combustion. Now I know in your picture here it's black and white like mine, Maybe we'll write blue flame so we can actually tell what that is. This occurs when plenty of oxygen is available. Under these conditions, we would say that methane is the limiting reagent, so it's getting used up completely, and we have more than enough oxygen than we require. If we have more than enough oxygen, that means we're going to get complete combustion or a complete reaction and uh, we'll get that nice blue flame. And of course, another analogy for that deals with the making of a s'more that you did with that previous assignment. So if we think of the equation, quote unquote, for a s'more is two graham crackers, four chocolate chips, one marshmallow. This would be the scenario which would involve a reaction to make a s'more. So two crackers combined with four chocolate chips and one marshmallow to make one s'more. When exact stoichiometric amounts of the reactants are combined, all the reactants are used up and we get a s'more. However, when non-stoichiometric amounts are available, such as in the figure down here, uh, some reactants are going to be left over or in excess. 
the number of s'mores that can be produced is limited by the number of marshmallows in this case. So if you take a look, so this is the combination we're talking about. So what if I had uh, four, six graham crackers and uh, 12 chocolate chips, two marshmallows, okay? So according to this, if I had six crackers, I could make a possible three s'mores, right? And over here, if I have three sets of four, I could make three s'mores if I had the other requirements. But if I look at marshmallows, oh, I could only make two s'mores with two marshmallows. So this is going to be my limiting reagent. And I'm going to have some excess and some excess here. Okay, so this is a quite an easy example. We can see, in fact, what we get. So we'll have two marshmallows, two sets of four, and two sets of two. And of course, here's the leftovers. Here's the leftovers right there. Okay, so in this case, marshmallows are the limiting reagent, and the chocolate chips and the graham crackers are the excess. And here's the, they show the two here and the four right over here. All right, so let's apply that to chemistry now. So limiting reagents and chemical reactions. We can apply the simple logic to this example here. The figure below right shows nine hydrogen molecules and three oxygen molecules in a flask. What happens when the spark ignites? So we're making water by using hydrogen. And you know, let's, we'll draw them here. So let's draw a set of two and a set of two indicating two hydrogen gas molecules. And we have one oxygen molecule. I'll draw those as bigger like that. Okay, and to make water, we need one oxygen and two hydrogens. One oxygen, two hydrogen. Looks like a Mickey Mouse head. Okay, so that's the scenario here. The, these break up. Two of these attach to one oxygen, and then two of these attach to the other oxygen. So that's the, that's the so-called recipe, the chemical equation for that. And it looks like I did it backwards. Shoot. Because they had the hydrogen is clear white and the oxygen is that. Okay, well, that's okay. But we can see here that we need two of the little for one of the big. So two of the little for one of the big. Two of the little for one of the big. Two of the little for one of the big, if that makes sense what I'm saying. And you can see I'm going to have leftovers here. I have three hydrogen molecules that are leftovers, that are extra. So in the figure on the next page, the molecules are grouped together so that it's easy to see which molecules result in the formation of water molecules. Since the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is two to one, only six hydrogen molecules are required to react with the three oxygens. So one, two, three, four, five, six of the hydrogen and one, two, three of the oxygens. As a result, three hydrogens are going to be left over. Three of those hydrogen molecules are left over. So in this case, we would say the limiting reagent is oxygen because it got completely used up. And the excess reagent, the one that we have left over, is hydrogen. Because that's what we have left over when indeed we used up all the oxygen. So if you look at the next page, they show a possible scenario here of how they circled them. It's similar to what I had, a little bit different, but again, we still have the same thing happen. Two waters, two waters, two waters, and then we have our excess left over. All right, I think I'll stop the video there, and then when we come back, we'll talk about applications of limiting reagents, and then maybe we'll take a look at one or two of the questions from the assignment. All right, we'll see you again.